I used to skip school, go down the city hall in Philly, and watch criminal trials. My father was a lawyer with an office across the street. He'd circle trials in the paper for me and send me over. He considered it an education, and I agree. Courtroom drama became much more interesting than life in our Northeast Philly row house. We plucked 12 people from life, call them society, and suspend time while a defendant sits in purgatory waiting to be cast out or accepted back in. It's an epic battle that continues day in and day out. I entered law school thinking I'd make a difference in this battle for justice, but I became disillusioned. First, during my internship at the U.S. Attorney's Office, in order to get help for a mentally ill woman, I'd have to lie and say she was dangerous. I couldn't do it, and she was sent back out into the street. I worked with child abuse cases and watched traumatized children freeze up on the witness stand and the guilty guy go free. Later, I moved into corporate law and finally got to the point where it was hard to care which side won. Meanwhile, I'd become fascinated with the phenomenon of the jailhouse literary sensation and especially Jack Henry Abbott. Abbott was the lifer who became a cultural icon and darling of the literary world after his letters to Norman Mailer were published. The tragic irony of the Abbott case is that this evil man whose insane gibberish people thought showed talent only because he killed somebody and who was released from prison with Mailer's help just before his book would be reviewed by the New York Times killed a 22-year-old guy working in a diner just six weeks after his release. This counterman was just trying to make ends meet, while of all things, he struggled to become a writer himself. We tend to invest our violent criminals with special qualities. They're rebels, like Abbott. They're poets, like Gary Gilmore. They have greater souls, like Ira Einhorn. Or they bravely act in the face of society's most sacred rules, our anti-heroes. Only in truth, they are almost never heroes of any sort and kill because they are less, not more. The jailhouse literary sensation basking in the limelight of a little life turned big through evil acts blossoms and flourishes in our misconceptions of them. This is the spark behind the killing of Mindy Quintana. A department store clerk is not only able but encouraged to build his celebrity from the bones of the woman he murdered as he writes his book. The lead character is a lawyer. He's a hero I've created from the many lawyers I've known who watch with disgust and disappointment as each new alleged celebrity murderer takes the stage, from Gilmore to Abbott to OJ to Scott Peterson, and want a comeuppance. This novel delivers one. I want to steal the wind from the hair of these false rebels. My hero does just that and is willing to go outside of the law to do it.